Hey everyone, welcome back to NetTuts. Today is the first episode in a new Q&A series. So uh, every week or so we'll answer a handful of questions. If you have one that can be answered in a couple minutes or so about web development, you can either email net at touchplus.com and put Q&A in the subject. You can leave a comment on any of these applicable postings or tweet NetTuts with your question. Okay, today we have three. So the first one concerns creating uh, callback functions with JavaScript. So you might be familiar with uh, something like jQuery where you can attach a click event and then you run a callback function when that event uh, has occurred. So we can do that with JavaScript very easily. This is a simple one. So let's go ahead and create some random function like do something. And it's going to accept a parameter, let's say name. And all we want to do is alert hello plus name. Okay. We've done this many times, right? So we're going to call do something. We're going to pass in our name, but also we want to pass in an anonymous function that will serve as our callback, which will only run after uh, whatever is contained within this function has run. And just for brevity, we'll say alert uh, callback called. Okay. So now when we pass this in, it needs to be represented up here. So we can either call it callback or you've probably seen cb before. So now this variable cb is equal to this function specifically. So all we have to do is once we run our code at the very bottom, just do cb and call it. And that's really as simple as it is. So let's come back, refresh the page, hello Jeffrey, and callback is called. So that's an easy way to take care of that. That was an easy one. Okay, so the next one is about less. So you guys might remember a few days ago I uh, overviewed less.js and I got an email asking if there was a compiled version so they didn't have to worry about any JavaScript issues. Uh, yes, the one I was able to find is at incident57.com slash less. Uh, it's a free download and it seems to work perfectly. So let's do a test. Uh, let's create a new folder. We'll just call it test and come back to Coda. And within test, all I'm going to do is create a new style.less, and we'll just do something really quick. Color, red, body, background, color. Okay, that should be fine. So now we have to open up less, which you can download for free, as I mentioned. And let's just drag this in, and now it's watching it. So as soon as we save this again, it will compile, and you'll see a little box come up right there. Let's come back, and now you'll see it generates a style.css with our file, and then you can use that one for production. All right, so that works really great. I highly recommend it. Okay, and the last one is a more specific example about uh, a menu problem. So let's go into menu, and it looks like here he's got a navigation with a list of links, and he wants to know how come the background of black isn't showing up, and this is a, a common request. Uh, first, let's just go over a couple of things. You can clean this up quite a bit. Uh, you can change this to an HTML5 doc type. Something like that. You can uh, get rid of all this. Just clean up your markup here. Meta, char set. Okay, that's a little bit better, and you can get rid of that. Okay, so now the first thing is uh, the problem is that he's floating all of the elements here. So if I come back, uh, and if we set the quick fix is overflow hidden, okay? That'll force it to contain it. So what you're doing is because he's floating all of the elements, uh, it sort of takes it out of the flow of the document, even though these elements will still affect other inline elements. Uh, it'll cause the parent element to collapse. So most people set overflow to hidden, but if you're in a situation where maybe you need maybe some kind of graphic to overflow the boundaries, uh, the next fix is to do something called the clear fix. So what the clear fix does is it pretty much adds content after the element. And you can see content here. You can set display to block and clear. So it's pretty much the same thing as setting clear both. And then all you have to do is add a class of clear fix. And that'll take care of it. Uh, the only thing worth noting here is we're also setting zoom to 1. Uh, IE6 and 7 sometimes have some issues with has layout. So the star hack, uh, you could also put this into an IE style sheet specifically, but the star hack uh, uh, targets IE7 and below. So here we're just setting a has layout, though you could also do something like height 1%, but I've also heard that can have some issues in some browsers. So zoom 1 works just fine. Uh, just make sure you clear your floats. 
And that'll do it for today's uh, Q&A. Be sure to check back next week or so.